Hello! Welcome to episode 250 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 1st of June. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share the things that I've been making since the last podcast video. So today we have some knitting, some crochet, a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread on the Ravelry group, some confessions, oh dear. I have some information on my shop and a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast. So we've got a few make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram. Those are Craft 20 a Day, the Retro Mail and the Spring Shawl Along. Now the Retro Mail should finish at the end of May but I'm going to give people an extra week to put their entries in and then I'll draw for prizes for that one next week. I have a question from the Ask Me Anything thread which is asking about exactly how the threads work so I shall explain that in the Ask Me Anything section. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? So I have a finished object. Now Adam's mum has knitted quite a lot of this for me and I have finished it off but isn't it gorgeous? This is the Little Camaro by Tanis, Tanis Lavelli who's Tanis Fiber Arts and how cute is this? I absolutely love it. Now this pattern but the adult version has been on my list for ages and I thought that it'd be great for Jensen to have one in his wardrobe. So Adam's mum has knitted most of this and then I've done all the finishing off. So the colours that I've used are in a mini set that I have in my shop. It's the Mixtape Minis Remix Volume 10 that's all the colours in this yoke bit here and I got Liz to actually go through them twice um, so that so that it was making the most of the minis and there would be enough to knit the one to two years version of this jumper. So the stripes go all the way around the back. It is knitted from the top down but at the top you actually go backwards and forwards until you get to this point here. This bit here has got a little loop over the button so that can go over the baby's head nice and easy um, and then you can do it up when it's over the head. This little loop is made by doing a crocheted chain but if you can't do crochet you could probably get away with doing an eye cord here just to slip over the little button. I found a little button in my stash that I think went quite well with these mini skeins and I am in love with this jumper. I might make myself an exact replica but an adult version <laughs> for me because it's so so cute. So like I said this is the one to two years version but the actual pattern goes from 0 to six months, six to twelve months, the one to two which is this size and then two to four years, four to six years and six to eight years. So the pattern actually goes from birth to eight years which is brilliant. I haven't actually tried it on Jensen yet um, but I will do at, for the end of the podcast so you can see how it looks. Um, but I do love it. So at the bottom of the ribbon here there's a split hem on either side to give little babies a little bit of extra room. There's ribbed cuffs and a ribbed bottom there and around the top is like a garter stitch neckline um, and it's it's just got this lovely v-neck as well. This is knitted in some DK yarns and I'm actually thinking of putting together a kit for making this so you could do the same colours as me. So the yoke is made from five 20 gram DK minis in the, on the merino and nylon base and the bottom bit is just made out of 100 gram skein of DK yarn. So to make up to the two years size you can get away with just using one mini set of five 20 gram minis and 100 grams of the DK to go around the bottom for the contrast. So this bottom contrast is my rain colourway and it's all in the merino nylon DK base. I haven't actually blocked this yet but I thought that doesn't actually look too bad without being blocked so I'm just going to put it straight on Jensen and show you what it'll look like before blocking. Um, I just didn't get round to it this week but I think it looks lovely anyway. So at the end of the video you'll be able to see what Jensen looks like with it on and I'll pop timestamps in the video as well so you can um, skip backwards and forwards to different sections if you want to look at those. So the colourways in this mini set are all named because they're in the mixtape minis. This one here is called Tear Us Apart then we've got Who's That Girl, grey with little turquoise speckles. This sort of dark turquoisey blue is Ice Ice Baby. The 
dark greeny turquoise is there must be an angel then we have stay and then we're back round to the same minis again so this is mixtape minis remix volume 10 and the rain colorway for the bottom but i will put these together as a little kit um if you want to knit these if you're knitting above two years um i'll do a sort of doubled up version where you've got two skeins of the main color and then two sets of minis for the top portion here so my work in progress that I've got on the needles is a pair of colourwork mittens. So these are the Songbird mittens by Erica Hooser and you can see the twig and the tail of the bird at the top there um, which is taking shape and then on the back we have like a diamond design and some more geometric designs um, on the bottom here with some one by one rib at the very bottom. So these I'm knitting on 2.5 millimeter steel higher higher flyers because I like um, to work on these with color work mittens because I don't get the tight strands across the color work um, just on the edges here and I can get a nice flat finish at the sides. So they, I tend to go for the steel ones because they're not quite as sharp and I find that the way I hold these they can poke into my fingers a lot if I pick out this sharp version. So I do tend to choose the steel for the flyers. I did do a video on how to choose needles and I did show a little clip of how to use these type of needles so I'll pop a link to that in the description bar down below and on the screen as well. Um, so I'm knitting them with 25 millimeter needles even though the pattern says 2.75 because I know for the stitch count that this sort of size on 25 millimeter needles um, fits me nicely and you can see how that works. I think the original design she said to do them on 2.75 because they're more of a, a larger oversized mitt um, but these are more of a slim version because I've gone down to 2.5 millimeter needles so normally um, I think when I've knitted quite a lot of mitten patterns they say to use 2.75 and then I go down to 2.5 um, but this time I've done sort of the opposite way around gone down a needle size instead but I think that's coming out nicely you can see that I've got my stitches actually on a bulb pin and a safety pin here just because I had it hanging around and actually those two work really nicely so that I don't have to have any sort of big cables hanging. They're nice and small so they don't get in the way. So I'm knitting these in some Jameson and Smith in two colourways. I picked um, specifically to do these mittens in. I shall see if I can see what the um, colour numbers are this one the pink one is 1283 mix and the grey purple is FC21 so they're Jameson and Smith and I have actually got a colour card where I've got little samples of all the different colours so that I was able to put these two together and order them online where I have little samples so I can really see what the colour will look like. I'm only on the first mitten these are so enjoyable to knit, but I find that if Jensen's around, I can't really concentrate on the chart very well. <laughs> I'm using one of the Magma chart keepers as well. I obviously can't show you the chart itself, but it's got um, some magnets on a board to hold the chart down and to mark where I am. So I can't show you the chart because it's a paid for pattern. Um, but I do find that really useful to make sure I've got a mark of where I am in the pattern. So that is one of the things that I've been working on. But because I wanted something a little bit simpler to knit on, I picked up a ball of yarn that I purchased from East Anglia Yarn Festival and it is from Giddy Yarns. It's one of her gobstopper balls. And this one is called Red Sky at Night. So I've obviously used quite a bit of this. This is a 50 gram version, but she does do, do 100 grams as well. So I picked up a 50 gram version with a 20 gram mini skein there and I have managed to knit quite a bit of this sock. Ta-da! <laughs> I've got my knitting in a DPN case actually, even though it's a circular needle. I've just popped that inside um, and keep the snappers shut just to keep the stitches on the needles and stop the needles from poking in anything. So these needles are 2.5 millimeter needles and these are the interchangeable set from Higher Higher that have got the softer, more supple cable on them. And then I've got 2.5 millimeter tips on these and they're always sharp because I like sharp and when I'm doing magic loop. 
and look how gorgeous look how gorgeous that is isn't that stunning really beautiful color changes and then i'm using the contrast color for the heel the cuff and i'm also going to do the toe as well but you can see the full extent of the gorgeousness of stripes isn't that lovely so I'm halfway down the foot here. I'm just doing my simple top down sock pattern. So if you're looking for a free simple top down sock pattern, I'll leave a link to that in the description bar down below. I've just done a slip stitch heel or pinstripe heel as I call it. And then I'm just working on the foot now. So I'm just going to, when I get, as soon as I get to the toe decreases, I'll switch back to the contrast color and do that. So quite often when I do um, self-striping yarn like this, I'll cut a heel into it afterwards. Um, but these are gonna be for me. So I thought I'd, I'd make sure that I've got lots of room in the, the ankle and the instep area by doing a heel flap and gusset. You do end up with a slightly thinner stripe around where you're doing your decreases around the top part of the foot but i i'm i'm happy with that um and i'm happy that i'm getting this extra bit of room by doing a heel flap and gusset method but isn't that gorgeous i believe that helen from giddy yarns does updates on her self-striping yarn every so often um i know at the moment she hasn't got any in stock um but she quite often does uh, pre-order slots or when she does shows she normally takes quite a few of these uh, gobstopper balls with her and they look absolutely beautiful all hand wound into these gorgeous balls it's great as well because they're already ready to knit obviously i needed to cake up the 20 gram mini skein but that doesn't take long and then it's just such a joy to knit on these gorgeous colors and i love this colorway and i have got another one of um, helen's gobstopper balls as well in my stash ready to use when when the mood takes me to knit on some socks or maybe some mittens i don't know <laughs> i know that helen got samples of hats knitted in the self-striping as well so that's really nice so if you did have a hat pattern in mind um you might want to use that for the self-striping as well so that is all of the knitting that i've got to show you today but i do have some crochet so i now have my gaspiette socks finished and ready to wear so i'm going to get adam to do a little clip of how these look like on i have tried them on him before because these are for adam of course and it does feel a little bit tight as they goes over the heel but once he's got them on these fit really nicely um, so i'm really pleased with the fit so there are some tips in the pattern of how to get get the socks to fit and there's some really nice instructions of how to pick your size as well so make sure you read through those thoroughly if you haven't knitted a pair of crochet socks like i hadn't before and i'm really pleased with those and i had a skein of wicko yarn this colorway is called wide-eyed wanderer and i just thought it'd be really nice for some crochet socks so adam is dying to wear these they're a little bit thicker than normal sort of fingering weight socks because they are crocheted um so he will be nice and cozy and the weather has turned a little bit colder again so he'll be very appreciative of these <laughs> there is some really nice um lacy pattern at the top they are a heel flap and gusset construction but in crochet so that was interesting to do so I used a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. My favorite one is the Amore crochet hooks from Clover to complete these. And I had about 25 grams of 100 gram skein left. So I do, I have used more yarn than I would for a normal knitted sock, but 100 grams was enough to knit a size six UK sock. So I would encourage you to have a go at some crocheted socks as well with those single skeins in your stash. So this is how difficult it is to get over your heel bit tight but it's on nice and cozy so what do you think adam do you like them yeah they're nice they feel all right a bit thicker than the normal finger in weight aren't they they are keep you nice and cozy yep thank you very much you're we've, welcome we've got a sneak peek of jensen's jumper at the back here um let's have a bit of a walk up and down of your socks to see what they look like properly Someone asked me last week as well about whether you can feel the stitches underneath your feet with these. They feel slightly textured, but they're okay. Yeah. I think it depends on what sort of yarn you use as well, because this is a soft merino. 
then they're going to be a bit squishy and you won't be able to feel the texture as much as a sock yarn that's rustic. So thank you very much. So we are now onto the Ask Me Anything section. And I've had a couple of questions from the Ravelry group, um, the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group. But of course, if you do have questions and you don't have Ravelry, you can email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com. So the first question from the Ravelry group is from Margie and she said, where do I keep my shawls? Because they, as you know, if you've been watching a while, I have got a lot of shawls. <laughs> So I've been through a few techniques of sort of storing them. I had those hangers where you have lots of different bars across so you can put sort of um, trousers on and things. I did used to use those and I could get about five on a hanger but I found that I was using an awful lot of hanger space once I'd hit about 30 shawls. So I don't do that anymore. I bought one of the shoe hangers that you hang um, onto your hole in your wardrobe and there's all boxes on top of each other that you can stack sort of shoes or all sorts of bits and bobs but I use it for shawls so I roll my shawls up so that they don't have crease marks on them and then I stash them away in this hanging device I got mine from Ikea I think it's for shoe storage really um, but you can get lots of different versions of something like this and it just allows me to store a lot of shawls in a smaller amount of space and I definitely recommend this um, because it is, I think it works a lot better than putting them in drawers and things because uh, I could get a lot more shawls in than in my previous storage methods. So I hope that helps Margie. So my next question is from Becky and she wanted me to explain exactly how the threads on Ravelry work or you can also use the hashtags on Instagram. So the craft 20 a day thread basically or on actually all of my threads are like this. It's basically a chatter thread. So some people like to do a finished objects thread but I like to get it so everyone can just chat and get involved and it's not the prizes are given out to not only the people that actually finish the things but those who really get involved. So the more you go and chat in the thread the more likely you are to win a prize. Becky was asking, do you need to do daily posts? No, not at all. You can just pop in and out of the thread whenever you like. But as I say, the more you post into that thread, the more likely you are to win. And the same goes to Instagram as well. The more posts you do in, with Instagram with the hashtag craft 20 a day or one of the other make alongs, the more likely you are, you are to win a prize. So Becky's also saying that if she does more than 20 minutes on a project, do you have multiple entries? It's actually up to you, Becky. If you've got lots of things and photos that you want to share, come into the thread and share those and comment on other people's work as well. So if you've commented on lots of other people's work, then you're more likely to win a prize as well. So it's a real, I want it to be a community um, rather than just isolated to people who have finished things. So just come along and join in and it, I just draw uh, a random number out of the numbers of the posts and the person who comes out wins a prize and it's normally either yarn clubs or some yarn or little bits and bobs that I sell in my shop. So I hope that answers your questions both Margie and Becky and now we're on to the confession section. Oh dear. Right I went to home bargains I do love going to home bargains. There are lots of bargains in there to be had. <laughs> Quite a lot of cleaning products and storage products, but this time there was crafty stuff. So I thought I'd show you what I picked up. So there's a new range in the home bargain store called Sarah Ashford. And there was a few things that I picked out that I thought, ooh, I quite like those. <laughs> <laughs> and there was some fabric woven labels that you could use for all your sort of sewing projects. This took ages, which I thought was brilliant. Just for you and handmade with love. And they're woven ones that you can stitch on stuff. And they were like, I think they were 150 or something. So absolutely brilliant. When you buy these sort of things from other shops, they've come up at a much more expensive price point. They've got these little clips, which are like wonder clips, which are really expensive. And they've got a pack of 10 for a pound, so I had to pick up some of those. I do actually have quite a lot of um, wonder clips from before, but you know, I had to buy some so I could show you guys. <laughs> they seem to be as durable and sturdy as the wonder clips I'd got before, and they were a pound for 10, so brilliant. And they also had blue as well, but these are the pink version. 
I take one out of the packet to show you. They're brilliant. They're brilliant for gripping on to your sewing projects or all sorts of jobs really um, where you don't want pin marks or anything or the fabric you can't put pins in so you'd need to have um, clips so definitely recommend those there were some buttons for like a pound so I had to have these I thought these would be really good because if I'm making anything for Jensen um, there's some nice blue buttons in a range there that I can use uh, for lots of different projects and a pound how can you go wrong <laughs> I got a few of these actually, they're embroidery hoop rings and these are bamboo ones and these were about 150. Um, and I just got a nice finish because they're bamboo and I picked up about three of these so I can do different sort of punch needle and embroidery projects and they've got a silver sort of closure rather than the gold one that there normally is. Um, so I've picked up a few of those as well, they seem quite good quality. And last of all but not least, I found this ruler. Now this was really cool. I picked it up thinking, oh, a, a skinny ruler might be quite useful. It's it's quite a flexible one. It's not a really solid ruler, but I saw this picture here. And as you can see, you can put a pin in one of the holes in the ruler and then you can use it to draw circles. So there are holes from the centre to the outside here. So I could put a pin there and I could draw a circle how cool is that? So I had to pick up this, £1.50, so I had to have that. It's it's quite a flexible one, but I still think it's going to be really useful to draw circles with and just use as a standard ruler as well. So definitely recommend a trip down to Home Bargains. So the next section is shop update. So I have now put up my June yarn clubs a little bit late, I'm afraid. Oh dear. So we went away um, last week and I completely forgot to put the listings up for the June Yarn Clubs, but they are up on the website now. I will leave them up until not this Sunday, but the Sunday after to give you a little bit of extra time to purchase those if you're looking to get some of the June Yarn Clubs. Um, but they will be shipped on the 16th of June. I will also be popping the little Camaro kits um, to make this jumper up on the website as well so um, so you'll have all the yarn that you need to make one of these little baby jumpers so those will be in the shop tomorrow at 7 p.m. GMT I'll give different options for different sizes of course because you'd need different amounts of yarn for different sizes so now it's over to you Jensen and your little Camaro jumper Jensen look at mummy <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, monkey. Look at you. <laughs> All right. Can you do a twirl for mummy? Can you do a twirl? You know how to do a twirl, don't you? Do a twirl. Do a twirl. Come on, do a twirl for mummy. Come on, you know you can. That's it. Do a twirl. Whoops. Turn right round. Do a twirl. <laughs> Come on, don't get shy. Come on, you can do it. Mm. Oh, that looks lovely. Mm -mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Yeah. Nice and cosy. <laughs> Do you like it? Thank you very much, Jensen. <laughs> Are you tired? Yeah. Thank you very much. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Ah. 
So last week we had a little trip to Disneyland Paris with Jensen and that was fantastic. So I have actually recorded a video on our little adventure and I will be uploading that in the next week or so and I'm thinking about putting it up to a separate channel um, but I haven't decided yet quite what I'm going to call it so any suggestions are very welcome. Keep your eyes peeled for a little post saying that I've uploaded a different video onto my other channel and you'll be able to find the channel there but as I say if you've got any suggestions of what I should call my sort of home life channel um, that would be greatly appreciated because it's very difficult to decide on a name. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also ding that notifications button as well to get notifications whenever I put a new video up. So I hope you all have a lovely crafty week and I shall see you next week with a new video. Bye!